Hey folks, welcome to another episode from Kinetic Cycle Coaching. I am Coach Scott, your host and basically the bloody owner of Kinetic Cycle Coaching. So you've joined into a very exciting chat. We're going to talk about power to weight, but I'm going to present it in a way that may surprise you. I'm going to throw some facts and figures at you. I'm going to get you to be thinking about your goals and maybe how successful you've been at reaching those goals, but also give you some fake facts that you've got right now. And one of them is your fake weight. Yes, you've been lying about your weight in a way that's maybe taking away some of the development of your fitness. You've probably been dialing into a metric in terms of your fitness testing that is not really accurately allowing you to progress as much as you think. You've probably hit a plateau with that particular number and you need to really ramp things up a little bit. So we've got to dive into things. Let me share with you a couple of the nonsense little things that we've got to do. Okay, so <laughs> nonsense. Get me on Instagram, folks. I'm back on Instagram and kinetic underscore cycle underscore coach if you like all things in terms of short form content i'll also be sharing a lot on tiktok the main place to find me now you can scan that code that'll take you to kinetic cycle coaching school this is a free community this is a place where you cannot share what you have for your dinner okay this is a re real community the link is in the description as well please Fill in the questions and you'll be allowed into the fastest growing, safest, most engaging cycling community on the thickin' internet. I promise you, that is a fact. Okay, right. Where has this little topic come from? Lots of questions over several weeks about weight, but also power to weight. And at the time of streaming of this episode, we are at 3rd of July 2023. So the Tour de France 2023 has just kicked off. And I get so many questions about, oh, coach, have you seen some of the new bikes? They're under seven kilograms. Why is that? Oh, this bike, that bike, this weight, that weight. Let's dial into weight. Let's show you some numbers. I'm going to share a couple of test, real, genuine test data from a couple of riders. Show you some pro stats. Estimated, of course, because they never really give you the true information, but also leave you in the next 20, 30 minutes with some, I mean, a plethora, do you like that word? Yeah, I looked it up in the dictionary, don't worry. A plethora of ideas that at least one of them, I guarantee you, yep, I guarantee you will move you forward. Okay, if you're new to the channel, why haven't you subscribed? Where the fuck have you been? Okay. Come on, I'm going to tell you as it is. So hit that little subscribe button. And also at any part in this video, if I say anything that offends you, please just fucking turn off. It's dead simple. There are millions of channels on the internet, okay? So if I offend you in any way, I do not mean to, okay? It is just sometimes I get a little bit passionate. I'm 52 and a half years old, maybe 52 and three quarters now. And I've been in cycling all my life. I've been in sport all my life. It's something I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about your fitness. And that's why I share so much shit. Anyway, let's get into it, coach. Shut up. Oh, by the way, join in the chat. Where are you from? Okay? You can share where you spin, where you smile, where you sweat, as long as it's not rude. Okay? I'm banging my wrist off. Okay, folks. Right. Okay? What is power to weight? Most of you will know the answer to that. This is not an idiot guide. I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs. We take your power and we divide it by your weight. Simple, yeah. What power though, coach? Now that's a good question. And that's something that we'll dive into. You have a power curve. You've probably never heard of a power curve or you have, one way or the other. You've maybe got something that gives you a peak power. Maybe it's five seconds, 10 seconds, goes up to a minute, your MMP, your max minute power. You've maybe used your max minute power in a ramp test to indicate what your FTP is. Maybe that goes up to your two minute power. That gives you an indication of what your middle VO2 is. Goes up to five minute power, your VO2. Maybe goes up to 10 minute power, 20 minute power. Oh, I'm familiar with that coach. I've done a 20 minute FTP test. Okay. 
from 20 minute, we may have 12 minute, we may have 30 minute, 60 minute, two hour, three hour. So what power do I use to calculate my power to weight? Well, I'll put that back to you because it all depends on what your goals are. Are you a power specific, short, anaerobic athlete whose key goals are nothing more than say maximum of a couple of kilometers? Maybe you're venturing into 10 mile time trials, or maybe you're like most people on the channel. You'll experiment maybe by doing local club time trials, but you're more interested in endurance, going further, higher, faster. You're not interested maybe even in racing. You'll do your own events, charity events, grand fondos, little DIY challenges. You want to cycle 100 miles, 100 kilometers, 200 miles. Yeah, you're getting into the mad, crazy world of the odd axe rider. So where do you work out your power to weight? Well, it's open to you. But what we'll do is we'll sort of narrow it down and we'll look at 20 minutes. Why? Because most people will use that test and we'll look at 60 minutes. And I'll give you some comparisons of where we can measure from, okay? So that is your power to weight. You can do it right now. Take a power, divide it by your weight and you'll get a number. What's a good number then, coach? Everybody wants to know what the pros are. Give us some examples, okay? So what I'm gonna do is give a couple of examples. So let's go, okay, let's take that away. Let's look at, now, warning example only. Okay, let's look at uh, Jonas Venegaard. Okay, so Venegaard is in the Tour de France right now, 2022 champion, 2023 favorite in some eyes. Now. I'll use Vinegar's weight he has uh, provided. Okay, 60 kilograms. Is it 60 kilograms? Mm, maybe, maybe not, okay? What we've got to understand, folks, is that the weight provided is not always necessarily accurate in the FTPs. So what I'm doing is this is an example. Don't be hitting buttons and saying, fuck off, that's not real. Most pros, okay, listen, most pros will have an FTP in the region of 400 to 420 watts. Yes, that high, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about a good amateur would have an FTP possibly somewhere around 300 watts to 320. Yes, that high. A good FTP is normally deemed by so-called experts as something in the region for an amateur of 250 watts to 300 watts. Okay, I believe that's a little bit of bullshit because FTP for me is not a key metric when measuring fitness. It's a good metric for measuring zones and the allocation of training zones, but when it comes to fitness, mm, got some limitations, especially for you endurance athletes. Okay, so let's dive in and look at those numbers again. So if Venegard, okay, oh, I get the right button, sorry. If Venegard's weighing in at 60 kilos, and let's say he's at that region of 420. So for 20 minutes, he's at seven watts per kilogram. Okay, now using a few calculations, let's say he drops down for 60 minutes and he's pushing out 370. So he can push out six watts per kilogram for an hour. So six watts per kilogram may seem like unfathomable, you know, it's unreachable for you. But that is a number, that is a key number when it comes to pro endurance, that's six watt per kilogram, okay? So you may be thinking, holy shit, so what's a good number for me? Well, what I would like to do in the next few minutes is try and explain to you a couple of numbers and then you measure backwards against power to weight and see where you are, okay? Because it may indicate that your FTP is a load of bullshit for you, okay? So let's go back in. So a good amateur. Now I've used the number of 70 kilograms for a good amateur. Why? Because this is a realistic weight. Now some of you will be lighter. Okay, you will be lighter. But on average, this is what I see from a lot of riders that would say be in the cat two category. Okay, so a lot of people I work with fall into older athletes, over 50. So 70 kilograms would be a very achievable weight for some, but way out of the realms of possibility for others. So if we use that as an indicator, and then we say, hey, let's go to the upper end, 320 watts for 20 minutes. Well, that gives 
a 4.5 at 20 minutes and a 285 for 60 minutes at 4 watts per kilogram. Okay. Now you may ask then, okay, well that's good. I would say that's extremely good. If you are achieving 4 watts per kilogram for one hour, okay, that is a gold standard for an amateur rider. Okay. So you can dial in your 60 minute. Now, how did I have 320 and then all the way down to 285? That is a rough estimation of the, the, the change. 20 minutes is not what a person can do for an hour. It is normally a lot less. Now, some people may argue that it's 95% or it's maybe 90%. I'm just throwing it out there to get four watts per kilogram for 60 minutes. If you can achieve that, fuck, you're doing good. Okay, for 60 minutes, you're doing really well. Now, what we have to then understand is looking at other riders, let's take some other riders in the Tour de France. Did you know that, for example, uh, Wout Van Aert, so Van Aert is around about 190, he's about six foot three. He's a very, very tall rider. So Van Aert will publish weight of around about anywhere between 75 to 78 kilograms. So if you start to then calculate those numbers into power to weight, you will probably see, holy shit, yeah, well that makes a big difference in terms of a 60 minute climb at an average gradient of say 78% in the Tour de France. Why somebody like a 78 kilo rider and a 70 kilo rider has a difference Okay, because that is a big weight to move. Right, before we get lost in numbers, I just wanted to throw that out. So have that in your head. You can probably work out your own now. What is your 20 minute? You would call that your FTP score. And then your power curve, maybe you've got a 60 minute. Maybe you've never done a 60 minute test. I would strongly recommend that by the end of this video, you'll maybe see why you should. Okay. Uh, so what about... If I was to say, what is your fake weight? What do I mean by that? What is your fake weight? Well, I often refer to the fake weight as the weight that someone will take first thing in the morning. They'll be naked, they'll be holding their gut in, they'll be making sure they've gone to the toilet and they won't have had their breakfast. They'll weigh themselves on the scales and then they'll display this as their weight, okay? Okay, yeah, and, 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 you know, strict rules, it is your weight, but is it the weight that you load up with and move around? So if we had a power to weight for normal life, because remember, what is fitness? Your ability to meet the needs of the environment. So when I train someone, we focus on what? Health. And if we focus on nutrition, hydration, stress, and sleep, fitness is a byproduct of all them. So fitness is not the number one chaser. Fitness is something that we incorporate into all aspects. You get them all right, you get stronger. So you've got to put clothes on, haven't you? Fucking good. Well, of course you have, right? You've got to eat during the day. You've got to drink. Your weight will fluctuate. Sometimes, sorry about the noise, I'll take that off. I keep banging my watch. Sometimes it may fluctuate between about two uh, kilograms. Yeah, in a day, in a day, right? I'm asking you to drink at least two, two and a half litres of water a day, okay? So, your fake weight is something that we sometimes publish. It may be something that you put into an app like Swift or Trainer Road, and it may be something that you're using to calculate your power to weight over 20 or 60 minutes. So, I, you maybe have seen the experiments I've done where I've, I've measured naked, fake weight, then I've put my cycling clothing on, then I've loaded up, then I've included the bike. And that weight at the best, at the best, stripped down, water bottles on, adds approximately 10 kilograms to my fake weight. So if I weigh in at X and I add on 10 kilograms, so I would often say to most people, whatever your weight is, what are you moving outdoors? Oh, coach, I do most of my training indoors and I ride at a particular power to weight. Oh, yeah, but it... it, it you know, it offers me gradients inside uh, a program or a ride. I can ride Alpe d'Huez, 
fuck off, can you ride out the raisins with? Of course, you can get a feel for it. You can get the gradients, but unless you've been there and ridden it, how can you control the temperature, the weather? How you're going to cope with fucking 21 hairpin bends, okay? Right, but the thing is, right, you've got to understand what you're shifting when you're out. So it was put to me this week, hey, have you seen the new Pro Bikes, 2023, 6.97 kilograms without water bottles on them? Yes, yeah, super light. You put that on top of a, a 60k rider like Vinegar, if he's riding 6.9, put his water bottles on, let's put him up to 7k. Yeah, it's very light. It's got his clothing, it's got his radio mic. Not much there, he's got his shoes. He's going to be under 70k, isn't he? Yeah. So that would be the weight that he's shifting up any hill. So when we're working out power to weight, you've got to be realistic. Now, most people can actually load up their pockets on their bike with so much shit that they'll add another five kilograms onto the weight that they're moving. Remember, when you're loading up for a hillier ride, always try and load up your bike rather than your body because it changes posture. But we won't go into that in this video. So start to understand fake weight. Then what you calculate then is, what is your ride weight? What are you riding at? And this sometimes gives you a real insight to some of the crap that you don't need to take out if you are climbing. Okay? So, because it does make a difference, right? It can make a big difference. You know, there's some phenomenal changes and adaptations in 2023 with geometry of bikes, the way that carbon frames, where it's folded, the, the, the stiffness of it. I, I saw one uh, video on a very popular channel that rhymes with uh, BCN, okay, whereby they actually looked and they were talking about the thinness of some of the tubing without a fucking clue that that's the thickest part of the carbon, okay, where it was thinner in terms of to look at an eyesight. And the increase in the thickness was an aero uh, design, okay? Yeah, we create clean air at the front of the bike because there's no point trying to create dirt air. Anyway, we won't get into that. But that's just the thing, okay? It annoys me. But anyway, what is your ride weight? So even when you go on, okay? Some people were involved in a little experiment I did over the weekend. We did four rides, none of them over a hundred, uh, one hour but the total volume was 100 kilometers because some people don't like riding more than an hour indoors. But we did one ride and we measured sweat loss and we had a minimum in 45 to 55 minute rides. The average was 0 0.6 kilograms of weight loss through sweat. It's quite a lot in just quite a short time with ventilation going on. So ride weight changes. I always talk about way in, way out. What you lose is sweat. You've got to replace that inside four hours. That's your window. If you can't do it in the evening, you've got to then do it in the morning. If you fall behind in your hydration, you're fucked. It's game over, okay? So understanding weight is something that's a daily thing, okay? I talk about weight loss in a way that's a bit different from most people because we add in good fuel. We add in five star rather than remove all the shit at once it gradually disappears. But do you know your fake weight? Yeah, the weight that you share to your partner, <laughs> the, weight, the weight that you write down in your little diary, or what's your ride weight, okay? I get myself weighed regularly because of my ulcerative colitis, and all they ever ask me to do is take off my jacket, okay? So yes, there are times, if any of you are consultants listening to this, I have cheated the system to put weight on. I wear a heavy watch if I know I've not been feeling very well because I don't like the quack in my ear telling me that I need to be careful, okay? <laughs> right, okay, what about if we then to split that up and look at your indoor versus outdoor weight? So this is me going back onto something like Zwift, or I'm riding at uh, two watts per kilogram, etc. Are you really, are you really? Because then there is the classic question again, wow, coach, I go outside and it feels like I've never ridden a bike before. That is just because the undulation versus the wind and the temperature make a big difference, but you're shifting the bike plus the kit. 
You're not doing that on Zwift. Yeah, sure, you're going up a gradient, but you're not moving the bike, which may weigh in at around about 8 to 10 kilograms, and it, or maybe even more. So you've got to understand that. That makes a big difference. Try putting a 10 kilogram plate in a bag and just carrying it around. It's a big difference, okay? But that has a difference to some of the numbers that you're, you're producing. Now, okay, let's say you stay consistent with that for the rest of your life and it doesn't really matter. But what it does do is it starts to create a false narrative with the actual weight that you are carrying. And that is where I get a little bit upset because there are people who create lies around about power to weight, around about their FTP being this golden uh, unicorn of a score, whereas it's not, okay, it's not. Right, so you've got your fake weight, well done. You've got your ride weight, starting to understand it, what you are when you when you go out on a ride. And you should be doing this every ride, indoors and outdoors, way in, way out. What is the difference based on sweat? So be consistent. So I don't mind you standing in your birthday suit before you go out, as long as you do that on the way back in, okay? So you can measure sweat. What about this? Okay, so this is the biggest problem we have when it comes to power to weight. I want you to now rate your distraction to fitness. And what I mean by this, before we start to dive back into some numbers, the rate of distraction is sometimes where we refer to the problems that you believe hold you back. I'm fat. I'm fat as fuck, coach. Okay, why? Okay, wh what are you not doing about it? My bike's too heavy. Oh, they have better wheels than me. I can only train four hours a week, sometimes three. They can do six, eight, ten. Who do you compare yourself to when it comes to this confusion, this distraction to your own fitness? Okay? So it's really, really important that you understand that the person staring at you in the mirror is the only person you're comparing yourself. But let's say you are over the age of 40, maybe even as old as me, over the age of 50, and some of you are even older, I know that. What is the key metric for you? Are you training because you have to? You put so much pressure on yourself that you have to maintain a number of efforts, number of workouts, a number of hours, a number of miles per week because of the pressure you've put on to yourself. If you don't sustain this number, you feel uh, defeated, you feel angry, upset with yourself. And this is a confusing situation you get yourself into. It's all based on producing the rides. Maybe you're just in a, a cycle of, you've got a couple of group rides, you enjoy going them, you're escaping something. It allows you to interact with people uh, because your life's busy, work's busy, etc. Your fitness is ultimately going to impact on your health directly because any workout is alien to the body. It's an attack. It may detect it as a, as a virus. It has to respond via an immune system reaction. In that, your immune system has to deal with the inflammation, the stresses caused by the workout. Okay? So, is it progressing your health? I don't know, coach. How would I measure? Your resting heart rate, your blood pressure, uh, your general well-being, your motivation, your mood, your appetite, your sex drive, <laughs> whatever, okay? It's got to be something that's been seen to be progressing. Now, the older we get, we've got to try and stabilise and slow down the degeneration of joints, muscles, VO2, these types of things. Now, you can create your own metrics of measuring your own health, but weight is fucking ultimately the stressor on the body, okay? Because if you're carrying too much weight, okay, your joints are getting overloaded, okay? It is a clear sign that there may be potentially higher cholesterol. So there's an attack on your CV system. In the UK, especially in Scotland, especially in the west of Scotland, we are the fucking KOMs for cardiovascular disease. I mean, we rule the fucking world. We are great at it. If there was a ranking that was published just like, say, <laughs> soccer teams in the world, or what, 
you know, imagine there was sort of playing cards and we had countries with, you know, we would be top trumps in most of them, okay? Probably joined by our friends across the Atlantic in the US of A. But the thing is, we can disguise that. And I speak to a lot of riders. Yeah, but I'm training six hours a week. Yeah. Has your weight changed in the last six months? A little bit. But, you know, I earn that beer, I earn that food at the end of the week because I do this workout. And we sort of fall into this yo-yo effect that I'll give out a lot of effort or I'll take in a lot of shit because I deserve it, I've earned it. Now, we live in a society now where it's really easy to sort of analyse, look, research what is in your bloody food. Now, I'm not saying go out and become a monk, go out and become a nun and just eat can, you know, live off the land. No, what I'm saying is, what attention do you pay based on what are you assessing as your master metric? Very few people ever use power to weight. For example, I said to you at the start, we'll use 20 minutes and 60 minutes. Most people haven't got a 60 minute, okay? Let me uh, share with you, okay, this. So this is a real test. Two riders that I've worked with. Rider A, 85 kilograms. Rider B, 80 kilograms. So, I would regard them as, you know, average riders, right? There's riders who are heavier, but they want to lose weight. There are a few riders who are lighter, obviously, okay? But these are two average. Now, I want you to look at the power, okay? I want you to look at it again, right? And I want you to look at the 60 minute power. So, Rider A has got a VO2, it's got an FTP, can do 300 watts, can do a little bit more actually, I just rounded it down to 300 for 20 minutes. At 85 kilograms gives them 3.5 watts per kilogram. Okay, not a problem. Okay, not a problem. We'll come out of that again. Because Rider A does mainly time trials, okay? But Rider A enjoys group rides, enjoys going out long, and it's got a, an excitement about endurance now and going a little bit further, okay? But did you see the problem? Have you picked up what happens with Rider A? Rider A might be you, and you might be striving to get a 300 uh, to 20 minutes. Oh my God, that would be so good. I've heard phrases about... I'd like to get 300 watts because I would enjoy my cycling more. What a load of fucking shit. You're not going to enjoy your cycling anymore with having a higher FTP because the human body has an inability to pace themselves. Whatever FTP you've got, whatever event you do, you will overpace it and it will become hard. There is a, t there is a swing point in all of life. All of life. You and I are the same. We will get to a point where it becomes comfortably uncomfortable. And then it becomes a mindset, not a physical capability. No matter how fit you get, no matter how, how many hours you submit to training, there is never a satisfaction with fitness. You need to understand that now. Never, ever will you be happy with your fitness. So you accept that. You just keep moving the journey on. Of course you have pit stops, bus stops and events. Hey, let's review where my fitness is. Let's do a little event. Let's do a little ride. See where I'm at. Okay, so you've got to understand that, that you will always go faster as Greg LeMond, he famously put it, didn't he? It doesn't get easier, it just gets faster. So that swing point, now how much is physical, how much is mental? 100% is in your head, because when that point comes, when you get your ass kicked and you get slower on a hill, or the group you're out with starts disappearing, mindset, okay? So, there's no 300 watts must be great, okay? Whatever you've got is great right now. You can't move it. Okay, coach, shut the fuck up and get back to what you're talking about. Now, look at Rider A. 300 watts, 20 minutes, drops to 260 for 60 minutes. So I got them to ride as hard as they can sustain for 60 minutes. They got three watts per kilogram. Rider B, five kilograms lighter. Okay, still, you know, a good average weight. These are both male riders in their 40s, okay? 280 for 20 minutes, so not as big as the big powerful time trial rider. 
but they only dropped to 70 for 60 minutes, which gives them a 3.4 watt per kilogram, 60 minutes, compared to the 3 watts. Interesting. Now, you may not think that interesting, but I do, and I see this a lot. Okay, now why was that rider having a much smoother transition to 60 minutes? Different type of rider. Okay, they're still quite, you know, muscular, 80 kilograms. Okay, so we're looking at someone of a, a Van Art type size, but a lot more on the endurance in terms of the hillier rolling. So also, at that power to weight, they're going to be consuming, burning less calories. Now, athlete number one, you can probably work out. This is a fast twitch fiber athlete, high peak power, over 1200 watts, uh, still in their mid 40s. Athlete two, not even a thousand, more of a slow twitch fiber dominated athlete. So has developed work at the lower end rather than the higher end. So what you might say has a lower VLA max, has got a preservation of carbohydrates more than athlete one. So you put athlete one, rider A, in a three hour rolling course, but yeah, can't get there, will die on the hills at some point because that even that point four on the longer hills. Now that might be you, but you would probably look at it and say, I want a higher FTP. Sure, if rider B increases his FTP, he'll also incre increase his 60 minute. So I would say to you, if you've never done one, go and set yourself 60 minutes. What I would do, okay, is start to then understand where is my 60 minute? Where is my 20 minute? Okay, so if, for example, I say to you that an amateur, the golden standard, if you can get it, four watts per kilogram or 60 minutes. Now, you may look at that and go, holy shit, I'm a million miles away from that. Where are you at 20 minutes? Because at 20 minutes, eh, sorry, four or three. So you start to then say, okay, where am I at three? Where's my zone two? So you start to then look at your zone two. Let's say your zone two sits at 150 watts. Let's say it sits at 200 watts. What does that give you power to weight? And then I would start to look at, okay, right, what's well, two watts per kilogram? You've got to pick a number that works for you that's in the lower half. So it's somewhere in zone two or zone three. And you start with that. So I would say to a beginner rider or someone who's not done this before, I say, okay, what's two watts per kilogram for you? Oh, it's 185, it's 210. Can you ride at that for an hour? Fuck, I don't know, it'd be quite hard. Right, give me as long as you can at that power. So what you do is you warm up and then say, okay, I go. And what you're trying to achieve is 15 minute periods. 15, that's one. 32, 45, three. 60 gives you four. And that gives you four points whereby you will have a heart rate reading. Okay, so the most achievable, you start off with that. So let's say it's two watts per kilogram. And you start to measure your heart rate at that. And then what you can do is build in each month. Hey, I'm going to do that again. I'll do and see where my heart rate. So your heart rate starts to come down. But in the meantime, your training and your fitness goes up. So you say, okay, I'm going to try that at 2.5 watts per kilogram. I'm going to try this at three watts per kilogram. So it's a different way of looking at your training, but having this built-in benchmark of this sort of lower ride, rather than saying, hey, I'm just going to stick to just all zone two. You throw this in, as I say, once a month, maybe once a fortnight, depending on your volume of training. You start to get really clever at understanding. But what will naturally happen now is you're trying to push up your watts per kilogram. You will start to pay attention. If you're weighing in at 97 kilograms, you're thinking, I know I'm too big. And this is a fact, but you've maybe been trying to lose weight, but you've been fucking cheating. Okay, you're cheating and lying to yourself because you're not really been that strict with it. Okay. Increase your power to weight is a super boost to increasing your health. Fundamentally, because you have to apply more attention to zone two, to fat max. So remember, your zone two 
If we go to about three quarters of your zone two, you will hit your fat max range without doing any testing. So even if you do FTP just for zones, take your, F, take your zone two, let's say it finishes at 150 watts, okay? Your fat max is, I tell you from experience, is going to be somewhere around 130 to 140 watts, okay? That seems too easy, coach. I can go a lot harder. It's not about what your ego or what you, you feel in terms of RP, it's what the numbers suggest, okay? Maybe you're dialed into using heart rate and you're, you know, you're cleverer with that, but I would stick with whatever the power number says in terms of that FTP, use it as a zone guide, but never, ever, ever go to the top, okay? Because remember, your FTP is an anaerobic score, unless you're pretty clued on how to do sustained efforts. You're normally going to go within about 50 watts. You'll start too slow or too fast. You'll drop, spike, drop, spike, sprint at the end. Okay? But the thing is, by having a clear understanding of where you're at. So, let me flip the coin the other way and say, oh, you've got an FTP at 300 watts. Well, is that 300 watts at 20 minutes? Is it giving you over 4 watts per kilogram at 20 minutes? If it's not, then you're looking at endurance or you're looking at anything over 90 minutes. You should be thinking about your weight. How much is your weight coming down compared to your FTP going up? Because your FTP will hit a range and it will not go up anymore. No matter how much you test yourself, you might be able to find one or two watts, but it will plateau and you will hover around a 15 watt zone. I promise you, you will, okay? Especially if you're over the age of 35, 40. That's it. You will hover around that, that zone and you can probably predict your FTP every single week based on other scores. So actually testing it continually, it's kind of meaningless. You need to look at other scores around it. And ideally, if you want to push up your endurance, you need to push up that zone too. It's that simple. And by combining zone two and zone five, you get the best of both worlds. But start to stretch out your power to weight, okay? Because it can be really, really valuable at giving you new motivation for your training, okay? But don't get confused with your fake weight versus your ride weight, okay? Versus the whole bloody shebang, everything, okay? Because that fake weight and ride weight are really, really different by you no, know, 10 to 15 kilograms, okay? But also look at stretching out that hour test. Get some numbers, okay? Now remember, you may remember a couple of episodes back, I talked about the health test of taking a score based on your FTP, create your VO2, 120%. So let's say, you know, it's, your, your VO2 is around about 120% of your FTP, gives you a score of 300, 320. Take a score of around about 70% of your FT, your VO2. Okay, so FTP, VO2, 120%, 70% of the VO2 score, and then you just benchmark that and you ride at that for 10, 20 minutes every month. You never change it. Keep it for a year at one number. Write it in big letters somewhere. Store it somewhere. And that number gives you, again, a set of heart rates that should be coming down over a period of time to tell you that you're getting fitter, you're getting more resilient to the power that was set on that day. And that can be used as a warm-up come a few months when it's not even tickling the system. It can be used as part of a ride. So therefore, you've got another benchmark. And then you start adding in, well, okay, what does that give me as a power to weight? Okay, there's so much data and analytics out there that it's not that difficult to do. One of my jobs to help you when we go inside school, especially the university page, is for me to teach you how to coach yourself. Do you fancy that? I give you the skills and then you execute it. I'll give you basic little skills that will allow you just to take yourself and coach yourself. That'll put you out of business, coach. No, it won't. There will always still be people that want to engage and talk with me. But you're maybe one of the ones that's, you know, really ready for that. You've done a lot of training. You just want to really dial in and move yourself forward. Be the best 50-year-old that you can be, 60-year-old, 70-year-old. Be the best version of yourself, understanding what metrics matter 
And the FTP might as well for stand for, okay, fuck the progress. Okay, because it can, basically. <laughs> it means a lot of other things, I know. But uh, it can hold you back because you're searching for this high number. And it's never going to bring you satisfaction because you're constantly going to, you know, outperform your own body because your mindset is stronger than your physical capabilities. Fuck, that doesn't matter, does it? it does, you know, that's that's why, you know, life is the way it is and that's why you're wired up the way you are. You're different, special. You know, you live outside your comfort zone. Don't worry about it. It's great when people say, why the fuck would a 52-year-old want to do something like that? It's because I'm not you, okay? It's because that is the way that I laser focus in. Right, before we go on, okay, before we go on, we're not finished, right? What I want to do is to get you now thinking about this. Are your goals yesterday's actions? I want you to think about that for a second. What the hell do I mean by that? Okay? I want you to think about how you create your goals. What type of goals that you create? Maybe they're, I've got 12 weeks before this event. Well, 12 weeks, you will move your fitness forward. But move it forward to what point? A magical point that makes this event easy? No event is easy. If it is, you're not trying hard enough. You need to get to uncomfortable within five minutes, within half an hour, within three hours. Doesn't matter. It is going to happen. Okay? I have never spoken to anyone to say, wow, that gold medal was easy. Jeez, I just turned up. I've done all the training. Train hard, race easy. Okay? A crap saying but it does have some uh, gravity in, you know, what is meant, but <laughs> nothing is comfortable, okay? Nothing in life comes easy. You're not owed anything. There is no luck involved. You've got to graft, and then even when you're grafted, it's still hard. And when you accept that, and those people who do, they get successful. But you think about your own goals. Goals are important, short, medium, long term. We got them written up, we got them on our phone, we got them fucking tattooed on our body. They're important, okay? But they're easy. Right? Now you may have become more accustomed to what I talk about the global and the and the intrinsic. So this global goal is what we share. But the secret goal, what we protect, we hold on to ourselves. I'm not gonna tell anyone that because the chances of me achieving it are, are slim and I don't want to look like a complete and utter prick when I don't get it. People saying, ah, I told you so. What are you doing, you fanny? 52 years old, yeah? Thinking you can cycle a unicycle while juggling fireballs. Up Ben Nevis, ya fanny. Okay, a bit extreme, but you know what I mean. But what is the difference between successful and unsuccessful people? Is it because they write their goals better? They have them painted. They have them in a, a book with a padlock. Goals are just yesterday's actions. Anyone can write them down. But our success is based on today's actions. What you're going to do after this video. What you're doing right now. How you're thinking and processing. How you're going to move forward. Okay? Because it's only via actions. That's common sense, isn't it? But some people feel there's an obstacle for the action. And that is because you've got a distraction to fitness, okay? Let me give you an example of something. Let me share a little story with you. Tomorrow is the 4th of July, okay? So in America, for many people, this will be a holiday. It'll be a great day. It's a fucking fantastic day for me, okay? And even better for somebody very close to me. It's my daughter. It's her birthday. She's born on the 4th of July, okay? So she's 18. Wow, can you remember being 18? Wow, 18 years old. We're going to have a great day, a few hours together, fantastic day. So, here's a story. People may say to me, happy birthday to your daughter, okay? I'm sorry that I'm working. I'll get a gift around to you on Wednesday, okay? Does that, does that sound reasonable? Okay, so what I would say, that's a fucking joke. Your work doesn't impact on me. It impacts on you. 
So don't use your excuses to impact actions on me. Now that may sound a little bit harsh, but I think it's true. And it's true of a lot of people that we express, I don't feel very well today. I don't fucking care. Okay? It doesn't impact on me. Would you care if I said, oh God, I've got a hangover today? You wouldn't care. But we do this. We reach out, okay, through our own situation. So I'm saying to you, what distraction have you got that stops you reaching the goals that you've got? Okay? Now my daughter as well made applications to university, got one, didn't get one. The one that she didn't get was the one she wanted. But why is a university rejecting her? Because they've got their own criteria, their own standards. So why is it if a hundred people set the same goals, maybe only 10 of them get them? Because that's fucking life, okay? Because there's 90 of you will not commit to the actions. So when we start bleating and complaining, Oh, it's okay for some to be weighing in at 60 kilograms, 80 kilograms. I wish I could go under 100 kilograms. Why not? Because you've maybe displayed actions that are inferior to the goals that you've set. And then you've created a lie against the truth. That's important to understand. That's not me being harsh because there are plenty of opportunities that I've had to work a bit harder, to push a bit harder denied myself an opportunity. But as long as I can understand that and then process and move forward. So I challenge you, okay, to stop worrying about creating fancy goals. Create one action, one action that you can repeat. Here's the thing with fitness. The fitter you get, the more dangerous you become to screwing it up. Because once you start to elevate your fitness and your FTP goes up, you think this is great. You become dangerous because you sometimes try and hack the system. You change the dynamics of the habits that you created to get you to the first level. You do a little bit more higher intensity. You don't really recover. I need to, I'm getting fitter, I'm getting stronger. You then start to, you know, take your mind off of equipment you buy little bit more, you've got a little bit more disposable cash, I'll get those wheels, they'll make this difference. And you just start to forget about the fundamental basics that allowed you to progress. We are only as good as what we can repeat, not what we can progress. So I talk about your sustainability, your repeatability, your consolidation. We've talked before about apps like Trainer Road, progress, progress, progress. That's not the case. You need to Sometimes consolidate, do similar workouts, measure, make sure there's progress. If you fail a test, or if you can remember as far back as high school, when you failed a test and then you moved on to the next unit, you're accumulating negative experiences and a lack of knowledge, especially if you're a boy. Go and learn what you didn't know. Who fucking, what, what the hell kind of sentence was that? Oh, you don't know 40% of that. Away and learn what you don't know. What the fuck are you talking about, you moron? Get out of my class. <laughs> anyway, okay, enough about me. But you get the idea, but it's the same with fitness, okay? Consolidation. Anyway, I hope you understand that. Right, so, power to weight, crazy number, isn't it? But you got a 60 minute number, you got a 20 minute number, maybe three hours is your number. Start to build in, get a clear indication of where it's at, okay? But get that bike ride weight. Start to weigh yourself naked and then with all your gear on. What is the difference? Why are you shifting up those mountains? Because it can allow you to play around with what you carry, etc. And how you load up. Here, I'll leave you with this scenario. So I had this debate with other coaches. Let's take Vinegard, for example, 60 kilograms. And let's take the 80 kilogram rider. So there's 20 kilograms difference. Do you think, right, if we handicapped Vinegard, like a racehorse, so let's strap on uh, weight, let's put a concrete bottle, okay, or a lead bottle onto his bike, right, but let's try and just load up or put him on a bike 
that gives them not seven uh, kilograms, but we add on a little bit of weight. Now, it's very difficult to do because components make a little bit of a difference as well. But if we're climbing, not so much. But do you think if we try to make vinegar 80 kilograms and uh, even with her, but they've got the same, vinegar's got his own cardiovascular system, yeah? It's never going to be equal, is it? Because even making the same weight of that bike is never going to, because cardiovascular will always win. So what I'm saying is, yes, monitor your weight, but if cardiovascular, you can continue to improve, great. But FTP is not the be all and end all. But surely coach, if I don't improve FTP, I don't improve my zones. It's not true, okay? That's not true because if you're only ever doing a 20 minute test to measure FTP, then yeah, true. But where is your zone two at right now? Let's say it's at 200 watts, okay? So if I told you as a 52 year old guy that doesn't train a great deal, my three watts per kilogram will sit at 200 watts, okay? So it sits around about 200 watts. Now it's done that for fucking years, right? It's been round about there, okay? But you take yours, where is it at? Measure it, start to take some heart rate data. Can you fulfill a one hour test at upper zone two or close to and keep your heart rate in zone? If you can't, you measure the point where your heart rate leaves. Let's say it's 42 minutes, okay? That's where it's at. So you need to go back, develop your zone two, do a little bit of zone three if you want, do some VO2, do a block of work, let's say three, four weeks, go back, measure again. Great, I got to 50 minutes this time before my heart rate entered the point whereby I knew that I was producing, you know, lactate. So remember, if we're developing mitochondrial efficiency, we are at a really good fat carbohydrate ratio. Let's say 60 to 40 is the best we're going to get. Okay, so you pick that number. Yeah, I've said go to about three quarters. So if you do that, you really want to conserve carbohydrates, you would go to about 75% of your zone two. Okay, but this is just an example. When you take that number, you start riding. You know, I would guarantee that within about six to eight weeks, you'll be doing an hour, your heart rate won't move. Then you just move it up. Okay, it's not good. I'm going to move it up. I don't need to move my FTP. Okay. Yeah, for convenience, you go into Zwift, it does everything for you. You don't need to become that lazy. You can manipulate it. If you don't want to develop your zone two, yeah, sure. Your FTP, unless you've hit that point, okay? So if I say for a 40 plus rider, okay, amateur rider, it's doing a minimum of say four, six, eight hours a week, 250 to 300. If their FTP exists in there, you've done well. It's going to rate, it's going to go up a little bit. But as soon as it gets to around about 300, it's not going to go much higher, okay? And it's not going to be the limiting factor to your training, okay? But your zone two can go up, yeah? I know people that have got very high zone two tolerances. They haven't got big FTPs. They haven't got big absolute power. They're very much endurance athletes, especially you guys that do ODAX and girls, okay? How does that sound, okay? All good? Right, okay. I am out of time. That was a long chat. I'm not going to have time for Q&A. And there's a reason for that as well. I'm doing more Q&A sessions inside my university page. Okay, so you need to come and join me in there to do the Q&As. I think when I add them on to the end of this, I think it takes away a little bit from the video. Uh, I hope there is uh, some points you can take away. If you want to dive in more, you come and join us on school, okay? I'll be doing a follow-up to this video on Wednesday when I pull out some of the content and the comments from the video and I'll be throwing them in. I want to also say as well about the amount of bike fit questions I've had. I'm going to put a little video in about posture. I'm going to develop it in terms of things that you can do. I'll do some short content as well about posture so that you've got sort of easy, uh, accessible uh, ideas to follow. Because remember, if you're going to train your bike, you know, four, six hours a week is enough to offset 
the antagonistic relationship or the mobility and stability of most of your joints, okay, that are active through cycling. And if you're not involved in postural strength work, you're going to be screwed. At some point, something will go wrong, okay? And what I mean by that is, remember, muscles work in a type of pulley system. One pulls and the other one pulls it back. They can't push. So think about it, okay? Hey, folks. Uh, has everybody uh, hit that thumbs up? Thank you, Rob. That's very kind of you. Let me see. I can tell. I've got a little... Uh, I know some people put it on the screen, but again, you know, I'm here to help. Okay, we've only got 50% of people giving a thumbs up, okay? Not easy listening, but thought-provoking. Sorry, was that a bit of a heavy topic? Maybe not everybody's favourite, but I hope there's something in there that will really help. We're into sort of UK summertime, so I know people would rather be out riding at the time that I, I show this, and maybe it's too early in the morning for some people. Okay, but hopefully you're on catch-up and you can enjoy that. Hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't hit subscribe, do it. If you want to join me inside school, I will show up the, the link again. You can scan that and it will take you straight to the school page. This page is free to join. No problem whatsoever. But the link is also in the description. Okay? Hey, folks. Thank you very much. I hope you've got something from that. A little bit heavy going. But hey. You can progress, okay? Just make sure that you don't just leave goals written on a bit of paper. Dial in actions. One action a day. If you can repeat it every day, as long as it's moving you forward, it will work. And remember, you're only as good as what you can repeat. But if you're sitting with a 300 watt FTB and it's only hitting 3 watts per kilogram, even at just 20 minutes, you've got to fucking do something about that weight, okay? Because it's that. It's going to help your health. Health sits at the top of any training plan. Hey folks, you take care and I'll see you next. University folk, we're going to live workout this Thursday. Okay, I'll post in the group and make sure you've got the second surge workout ready and loaded. Okay folks, you take care. I'll see you all soon.